small planes are all about flying high and fast. For others, they're about flying low and slow. In the 1950s, a unique new small kit aircraft appeared and was touted as the way of the future. The Benson gyroplane hit the home-built market and was immediately dubbed the flying lawn chair because basically that's what it was. Today's gyroplanes, also called gyrocopters or just gyros, are amongst the smallest of single-person aircraft. This is a Benson Gyro, which I built. Uh, some of the parts on it, an airspeed indicator, temperature, cylinder head, RPM gauge, fuel pressure, altimeter, clock keep track of the time. And these are the rudder pedals, which when you're making a turn, you use them in combination with the joystick. These are the push rods which control the head. Gives me my right and left, up and down. And back here is the rudder, which the pedals control that helps to make a smooth turn. And while the modern gyro has standard avionics, some of it is distinctly low tech. And this is a piece of string, which is a very sophisticated, nice instrument. Uh, it tells you where you're flying in trim. If it's up here, you're doing a vertical descent. Uh, if you're out of trim, it'll be to either side. With a cruising speed of 65 miles per hour and a range of about 85 miles on six gallons of gas, the Benson uses the thrust of a small engine to push it along. This hybrid aircraft uses the same aerodynamic principles that make other small planes fly but in a different configuration. It has a rotor on top instead of a wing like an airplane, but the rotor has the same shape, basically the same shape as an airplane wing. Uh, you see the airfoil shape to it. And uh, that's what produces your lift. It has a pusher propeller in the back, which uh, uh, propels the aircraft down the runway, and that allows the air to travel up and through the rotor, rotor system. Once you get get the, the rotor spun up, it starts to act more and more solid. And if we can force that solid wing through the air, tilt it back at about 10 degrees, uh, it'll scoop up enough air uh, that the aircraft will eventually fly. With no enclosed cockpit or even a windscreen on the Benson-style gyroplane, the pilot has an unrestricted view of the countryside. The feel of the wind in his face and the freedom to roam with the birds, all from the comfort of his flying lawn chair. Gyrocopters in general are uh, uh, the mo most maneuverable aircraft in the air. I don't know of anything else that has the envelope that we do. Tight turns, a 180 degree reverse of direction, to descend vertically, descend backwards, descending uh, backwards in flight. No, I don't envision any other aircraft out there being able to outperform uh, what we do. It's not an ordinary aircraft. And when people see it, they just, they just can't imagine it flies to begin with. And uh, then to know that you can master that aircraft and fly it and perform pretty well with it, I think it's an impressive feat for anybody. If you want to get around the really modern way, you need two things a one-man gyrocopter, and a Kodak Instamatic movie camera. The camera that loads instantly and shoots a brand new kind of movies called Super 8. So improved, they make other movies look old-fashioned. From the beginning, gyros were seen as the logical solution to the idea that sooner, rather than later, we would all have a flying car in our garage. So what happened? Why don't we? Could we still? 